I say this all the time, dog. I said, you know, Will Smith's worth five hundred million dollars, and he in a living with a bitch that hates his guts, and is in yeah. love with a dead nigga. You know what I mean? The, and still yeah. in love with Tupac. You know, yeah. uh, um, Johnny Depp is got a bitch shitting in his bed. You know what I mean? Like this, Jack Jack Sparrow, Pirates of the Caribbean. He got a bitch that shit. So like, and Harry and I both know dudes who were getting it. Successful, they getting yeah. money. Very successful. And they're in miserable and, and personal go, situations. Going home, going home to marriages that they hate. Yo, what's up, Square Pimp Brigade? On this episode, we have adult film star Maze the Goat. We discuss what it's like to get into stripping adult films, the way the adult film affects your mental health, dating of adult film stars, and being, uh, being a willing person who's into therapy. And removing the trauma that you already got. This was a really good one. A little, r- little rough on me, though. A little well, rough on listen, me. man, we get into some deep stuff on this. And it's, you know, it's, it's, you know, hurt people come from a difficult environment and stuff. But it's an interesting conversation of, like, uh, what to hold on to and, and how you get past it. And, I mean, we continue the show. Uh, we, we did more on the bonus show as well. Uh, Patreon.com slash Manschool202. That's where you could get the bonus show. That's where we do the listener mail, all the technical stuff, and all the old episodes of the uh, Beige Phillips show. The first 100 episodes of Manschool basically are, are going up there. That's where you can find them to make it easy. Uh, and if you'd also... Uh, so go to uh, Patreon.com slash Manschool202. To help support us, subscribe. It helps keep the show going. Uh, if you want a consultation for me, you could email me at advicefromharry at gmail.com, and I can help you. And Dante, if they want to reach you, what do they do? DanteNero.com. Click on consult. You can get me. Let's get it. I'm not an alpha male. I'm not a beta male either. I'm just a better man. Better man. Well, put your happiness first, because if you don't, they won't. Yo, what's up, y'all? GYBB, get your balls back. WWDD, what would Dante do to sexual revolutions being podcasted? And I am excited. Um, what's going on, Harry? You ready to rock and roll, baby? I'm absolutely ready to rock and roll. I was born ready to rock and roll. Every day I get up, I ask myself, am I ready? And I go, yeah, yeah, I am. I am. Okay. All right. Let's, let's yeah. get into it. We got a, a special guest. Now, I, I know I said that 500 times before, but this time I mean it. Um... <laughs> Uh, we got uh, a porn star, and uh, he's got an interesting story. Adult Maze entertainer. The goat, y'all. Give it up for Maze the Goat. What's going on? What's going on? How you guys doing? What's popping, y'all? We just, you just got off set, so we trying to, you know, you just trying to get you in here and let you let you say your piece and see what's going on. Um, I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna tell you, I'm, I'm Dante. So if you don't know, but I mean, I don't know if you're familiar with the show, but it's basically relationship based. And I, and and to be honest, um, one of the things that um, like we've had a lot of porn stars on the show, and I really got to a point where I I don't really bring porn stars on the show, and I'll tell you why because a lot of I mean you know your cohorts and you know the people you fuck with, um, yeah, the yeah, people that you work with, and yeah. a lot of times a lot of times they're just not interesting. Uh, because it's, you know, every, every, it's like, oh, I like to fuck. I like money. So I got into the porn business and I'm, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm just, you know, it, it's, it's a weird thing about, uh, in the porn business because you're fucking, because of the business it is, you find, um, you find that there's a, you know what? I'm not going to say that about po- the porn business specifically. I'm going to just say in general, I am over mediocre motherfuckers that have nothing to say that. in general. I respect that. And so yeah. one of the reasons why I was like, you know, uh, I was like, I want to get this dude on in because it just seemed to me like you had an interesting story and something. Um, you know, I, I, you know, we all get pussy. We all, you know, whatever, whatever. It, ain't, it is what it is. And if there's not a story beyond that, I, 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 I don't want, I mean, I, mean, I can't, Harry will tell you, mm. We've had so many porn stars where they go, you know, I like, I like yeah, money. the whole, the whole, the every interview we found with, uh, especially a lot of the female porn, the adult film stars, was the same thing. It's like, well, how did you get into the business? Well, I, I like fucking and I like money, so I started <laughs> fucking for money, and now I make yeah. money fucking. And then we're like, all right, cool, uh, fifty nine more minutes to kill here. 
Um, so, <laughs> so, so Dante is very hesitant unt- unless somebody's got a unique story or something to say beforehand that we know beforehand. And you have a very unique story. I mean, your background, uh, what you were doing before the uh, before doing adult film, adult entertainment, uh, you, yeah. you're kind of a renaissance man. You did a couple different things. Where, where do you, give us a little bit uh, of the backstory, how you started Maze. Well, it's pretty much a uh, jack of all trades, man. Honestly speaking, um, I started with like just the whole um, I was a break dancer, like hip hop choreographer. Well, not so much choreography, but like break dancer. Did that growing up in New York. That was kind of how I made money, you know. So um, as far as making money, I'm doing that for a while. What part of New York? What part of New where, New York? Where you from? I grew up in the Bronx, one seven five Macombs. Nice, nice, nice. Yeah. Okay. So I was doing that, like you know, it started with me, like just trying some flips and then I was making money on Times Square. You know, after that, um, I kind of started getting booked for certain gigs in Long Island, like Sweet Sixteens and Bar Mitzvahs and stuff like that. Um, started doing that. That was kind of cool. Switched over to like um, culinary school. Um, did some culinary. Really? Like, culinary school? What, 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 what style of cook? What, what style of cooking did you do? Uh, it was pretty much like a, like a little, I think it was like 13 month program with like some externships so it was a little bit of everything we did a little bit of like mm-hmm. all the different cuisines we did some pastries we did like we did a little bit of everything yeah what so, made you want to go into that grandma <laughs> okay. but yeah you know how I go man like I was cooking at home with grandma like for like Thanksgiving and all that since I was like a kid mm-hmm. helping in the kitchen and then eventually when I got older right. you know just took it to the next level, basically, you know. So, but that was kind of my backstory, you know, the culinary thing. Um, once I did that, I also like well, when I got into like sex work, it was like through stripping, you know. It was I didn't just jump on camera yet. I was like, you know, doing the stripping. How thing. long? How long did you strip for? Um, how long did you strip for? Probably about like five. I want to say five years. Probably started like from what time to what? From what? What period of time? From what time to what time? About 2014 to like 2015. So if you're familiar with like people in the Bronx, I was dealing with like Cameo. Uh, the dude who kind of like started me stripping was Heat 718. Um, a Latin dude from the Bronx. Who, bi- who Big Heat? Big, big heat. heat. Big, big Heat. Big Spanish. Yeah, big, yeah, yeah. Heat. Oh no, no, no. I know the big. I know the Heat. The Heat from from DC. Okay. The, the heat and Outlaw. They're a little. Oh, so I used. I stripped myself for from. Like eighty nine to ninety nine. Fire. Okay, so, that's what's up. Yeah, that's I was in up. it. So I I came up with like I remember when Cameo was starting out. Like mm-hmm. like that's my mm-hmm. man, man. Like I I remember before you know Cameo actually, uh, you know he was he he really started pimping heavy, and he was uh, like he but he was living in the hood, and they right. they came up in Cam's house and tried to murder Cam like Cam. Had a bunch of I don't know if you know him, he had a bunch of I his heard, intestines. I like, heard a little story about it. I didn't really get the details, but yeah, yeah. So Cam is my man. That's my dog. You you, you still keep in contact with him or no? Nah, I haven't told the Cam in a while. Should be told once I started like messing with he. He had a bunch yeah. of different shows, and I was like taking those, and I was kind of set from there. But like I did maybe like one, yeah, maybe like one cameo show as a bartender. Okay. I wasn't even stripping okay. yet. You know what I mean? Like okay, yeah. you know you know Punisher. I know Punisher. I definitely know Punisher. Yeah, that, Punisher know me. me. Him is cool. Yeah. Yeah, that was my that was my little diaper buddy. I used to him him dudes up to get his money. They would be like, "Yo, they not paying me," and I was like, "All right, let's go." Like, I go choke somebody. <laughs> yeah, what's so, a small what is, world? It's crazy because I still dance with like the companies that he danced with now, Hunk, uh, Hunkamania. So I yeah, was yeah, dancing yeah, out yeah, in, yeah. I, what I is was diaper? out in Atlanta what is City the, with them dudes. Yeah, sorry, Dante. Explain for what? us who some people who don't know what is he was like. Diaper Buddy is like my little shorty. He was like my little shorty. Like when I was coming up, I was older than him, and oh, and so like a little brother that you raised little... him, kind of thing. Yeah, like I yeah. I gave him his I gave him his first leather chaps. <laughs> oh shit! Fire! Wow, that's gangster. Yeah. yeah, that's what's up, bro. This is throwback right here. Okay, okay. Or yeah, so I was, yeah, was I was in the game. Was I was in the game pretty deep. I mean, I did a couple of I did a couple of live ex, sex acts back in the day with uh okay. when when Cam was doing so so Harry so you know there there used to be this whole industry of uh what we call locked door parties which was basically roving uh roving hooker a uh, roving brothel that <laughs> they would go from 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 
gym auditorium, the gym auditorium, and they would have a hundred strippers and and they would have like dudes would come up and, and basically dudes would just pay a cover fee and there would be a room where you could you you solicit sex in front of to the girl and then you pay like $30 for the for the room, but the room was just an open room, just a bunch of just debaucherous behavior Did going they put on. Like pipe and draping, <laughs> like a private little section it, or whatever. Just a picture a room, just like a room with nothing in it, just blowies, niggas getting blown. Just it was insane. Yeah. But yeah. Cam, Cam and, and so that uh this is right around the time. The history is that this is right around the time that Giuliani was cleaning up the city and he was set, he was he was putting Disney in in and cleaning up 42nd Street, cleaning up the deuce and all kinds of shit. And so he had vice dudes travel, vice police that was running around trying to trying to lock up all these motherfuckers. Lock, you know, they were trying to stop the, the whole game. And Cam and these guys, they were guys who started doing like, you knew that there was a party coming up and you didn't know what the location was. And you had to, you get a, a text or an email to go to this location. Everybody would show up and it was just debaucherous and so back in the so day how does that work in like 91 how do you spread the word of what these places like you know pre pre like buyers, pre email pre text like you how would do just you... call you would call you know you would call motherfuckers, motherfuckers and spread the word and then you'd have like a thousand niggas show up so it's just word and of a mouth. whole bunch of strippers or yeah the and they would yes, all man. and they yeah i mean do they i mean i don't know if they still do that but then but um, but you were talking about Punisher. Punisher was doing this thing where he was selling tables. My he's my little shorty, my man, a real good dude. Um, but um, you know, the game is uh you know, the game has changed a lot, you know, in terms of that. And a lot of dudes went from that to adult porn. I mean, I'm trying to think of the other brother, the other brother with the light eyes, and um yeah, it, it just it's it, it changes your perspective. That's anaconda. Oh, no. I mean, huh? That's Anaconda with the light eyes. Yes, Anaconda, Anaconda. But he was like younger when I was coming up, and and I I was like on my way out after that. But um, it's a weird thing in terms of your perspective because of the fact that the pretense for for um for confidence with women is whether or not you get laid. So when you're getting laid. It, it's like you have a confidence that other dudes don't have. You feel me? Yeah. yeah. Uh, and it, it's is, not like, yeah. yeah, go ahead. Speak on it. No, yeah, that is, uh, that is definitely true. Just speaking on like some of those like parties, like dealing with like Punisher and those dudes like coming in new, you know what I mean? Like I was like, you know, I, I was fit, but these dudes was big. You know what I mean? So yeah, like, you know, you move yeah. to the game, you're thinking like, damn. So it was a lot of intimidation there, a lot of like whatever the case, but then like once you start getting that love from that crowd, like your confidence changed now, you know what I mean? So you yeah. right, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, it changes your game with women. Um, I, but I've also seen dudes get spoiled, you know, uh, where where they where they get changed as people, and then when they don't have this to fall back on, um, then they 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 become cornballs because they never had a, you know, they didn't really have a personality in the first place. I mean, it's like literally. Exactly. You they know, never had know, to I mean, develop if, if you, any sort of game or anything. It was just easy. It was just like you know, shooting they, they fish in a barrel. They were relying on the lifestyle. You're right. They was just relying on the lifestyle. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know, man. That's just kind of weird to me. And then you can see it when these guys get around certain women, even now. Like, well, like, yeah. stars. you can tell who wasn't, like, really getting that type of, like, attention or reaction before they got into the lifestyle. Me, personally, man, just dancing on Times Square. After school, like I was doing that. Yeah, you got you so. got to have a personality to do. I yeah, mean, man. when you pass the you pass the bucket, if you can't speak spit some shit, you ain't gonna get you exactly. ain't no money in the bucket. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. You gotta know how to finesse that audience in a sense, you know. So, and then just like as far as like a, attention from women go, man, that shit was like since I was a teenager, bro. So now when I get here, it's like you know I kind of got like a different mindset about that whole thing, kind of like you just said, you know. Yeah. Yeah, it's a it's a weird thing. It's like I do like so like I said, I started in eighty nine. I went for, I went ten years, eighty nine to ninety nine, right? Um, I mean, I did a couple of live sex acts. I, I mean, I don't know if you remember this. I mean, I'm fifty six, so it. I, you remember Ebony A's? 
Ebony A's no. Old Definitely school don't. porn star. Yeah, that when you Google it later, you see. Yeah, so, yeah, I, I definitely yeah. am every A. That's in there, facts. Yeah, nah, I don't know what that is though. Yeah, so it, it's a weird kind of thing. So the, the podcast kind of, kind of birthed itself out of me doing this, and and uh, and really understanding the 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 the, the, social, the social dynamics of relationships and so on, and then. Then I was, you know, I was hustling and I and I was ended up pimping for a while. And that so in one sense, you are the you are the hoe, you know, when you I when you're it. dancing, you the you the product. And then mm-hmm. being on the other side of where you where you're pimping, it gives a gives a different perspective. And and so that's that's kind of where this this podcast birthed itself out of my perspective. So when I had a when I when I had a square job, I had dudes who were making a hundred thousand and better on a, in the nineties, which is real good money then. And they, but they would, you know, buy the house with the circular driveway and then couldn't get their dick sucked. Or, and I was like, look, dog, I, I could, you know, if you can get money out, you can get somebody to sell a pussy. It's easy to, it's easy to get her to shut up during the Super Bowl. You know what I mean? It's like the, 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 the yeah. you know, the, 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 the science of it is the same. So, it um, Maze, Maze, how, how old it, are you? Th- how how old are you, fam? Uh, I'm thirty. Thirty. I'm 30. So you 30. you young shit. You got yeah, plenty yeah. of time left. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. How I do you go? Old. How I do you turned. how do you get from the dancing to how the dancing to the adult films? How does that transition happen? So basically, when I started to um, like dance with this one company out uh, in um, AC, I wasn't really doing company work. I was doing my own stuff, like booking my own stuff, underground or whatever. And then when I got with them, I couldn't really take my underwear off. So I started to like dance on Connect Pal, which was the first OnlyFans, you know? Um, oh, wow. Where, okay. Where you put, yeah, which is where I would like show everything. I would get butt ass naked or whatever the case and do those shows. Mm-hmm. So I started doing that. Maybe like this had to be like 2015, um, something mm-hmm. like that. 2016, and then 2017, I did. Um, I created my 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 um my first OnlyFans page, and you know I was kind of dealing with certain girls at the time, and they wanted to like hide their face. <laughs> you know what I mean, bro? And like it's cool mm-hmm. at first, just to get your dick sucked or whatever the case. But when you want to like grow your content and like actually create the shit you see. You know, it's like, yo, you can't be hiding your face. So I said, I got to start dealing with girls that do it, you know? So I kind of mm. like started dealing with those errands companies in the Bronx, um, New Jersey, and then eventually like went down to Florida and never looked back, bro, <laughs> pretty much. So let me ask you this, because what's, what I find is it's like, I had a couple of dudes that was doing, you know, that they were trying to start porn companies in New York. And I've always felt like, Yo, this was such a great place to start it because there were their participants. I mean, the strip game was here and everything, you know, female yeah. strippers were here. And, there, and you always could get somebody that want to make money on them back. That ain't hard to do. Yeah. But yeah. but it always felt like it was trash up here. Like the comp like the the content was low quality. Tr- you 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 feel what I'm saying? Are you nodding your head because you know what I'm? Yeah, I feel exactly what you're saying. You know what it is because, like, all right. So I'm gonna be real with you because I've like I've did it with the people there. And I did it with people over here. Um, being from that side of town, being from New York, whether it's yeah, New York, yeah. Jersey, whatever the case, it's a hustle. You feel what I'm saying? So you're gonna put yeah. as less into it to receive as much profit. You feel what I'm saying? As well, when these motherfuckers are on the West Coast. They right next door to Hollywood. Like I, I can drive twenty minutes to Hollywood right now. So when they right. create a when they create a film, but there's gonna be sex or documentary or whatever it is, they rely right. on how Hollywood do shit. You know what I mean? They, oh, like, so it's they, just, it's it's sets and shit. Like yeah, because all, yeah. all, 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 yeah. all the New York shit is hoes in a hotel room. Pretty you know? much. <laughs> pretty much. Pretty yeah. much. You feel what I'm saying? And it is there, some dope ass talent out there. Don't get me wrong, like it's a lot yeah, of talent. But, yeah, yeah, but what, what I'm saying is the 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 look of it is just it's the look of it is trash. You know what I mean? It's just for, like there's no for the most effort. part. For, yeah, yeah, definitely for the most part. I feel like like a lot of companies, well, some some companies that come from New York and shit like that, East Coast, I, I should say, 
they don't really put that umph that umph into it. But then you got ones that's like free, like freak my media, freak my media kind of like school me on how to like mold my brain in a sense. You know right. what I mean? Like how to shoot, how to angle cameras, how to like get the right like lighting and shit like that. So yeah. he was. But then he also noticed what they was doing on the West Coast and then just took it back home and kept it home because he's still there too. But that nigga shit is fire. You know what I mean? Like, but um, yeah, yeah, yeah. as far as like those other companies, and I know exactly what you mean, that's just quick book companies. They ain't really worried about how to look. They just want the fast money. They mm -hmm. learned the little, the little scheme on it and how to make some fast money off it. And that's what they're doing. So and what's, that probably the, what's the, what's the, what's the, um, the business, I'm always wondering about what's the, I mean, I know, like, so if you do a scene, what do you, what do you, what's the going rate for doing a scene? If you're doing it in New York, what's the going rate for doing a scene? Because it's also funny how, um, it, in my day, the porn stars would, the porn, the females were the stars. Mm -hmm. And now it's like the dudes are the stars. And the women are just like one offs. You know what I mean? Well, no, nah, well, nah, not really. It, they're, they're definitely the stars still. I'm real with you. That shit is not in the You know what I'm saying? This is definitely a female dominant industry. They make the most. No, money. I'm not saying you know that. I'm saying, I'm saying like, yeah. when you talk about black, black film, right? Okay. You, you have, you know, I mean, you got a couple of, but I mean, the dudes, you know, like, got, it's a weird, I mean, you understand what I'm saying? There was a transition where, where the the, the 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 guy you knew the guys but you didn't know the girls you know what I'm saying like it it, it kind of transitioned I whereas before because, you didn't yeah. know the guys I mean the only one that you knew was Lex you feel yeah, yeah 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 but you see, know that's that's pretty much that was that that was kind of like that like that West Coast production era I guess you like referring to yeah yeah yeah, um, yeah well the contract a lot of the contract dudes. Yeah, you know. pretty much. You know what I'm saying, yeah. Um, so back then, like you would know those dudes because there was maybe about like six or seven of them that was like great, and like you know they was getting all the work. So like you know you you probably didn't pay them no money. You knew who they were, but nowadays it's like it's different because like they're giving. I don't know. Like OnlyFans has opened up a lot of doors for a lot of shit. You know, um, yeah. and companies see that shit. So like they're granting like male talent the opportunity to come in and, and and like have a platform to present to like present themselves it wasn't the same back then you know so it was like right 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 yeah like it was kind of like you so for me being a man back in like maybe in early 2000s late 90s you had to know somebody that knew somebody who was cool with somebody you know like okay. if you didn't know nobody like that then you, you probably get got in. in yeah but now as a male talent i got only fans i got twitter I got Twitch, whatever it is, all these platforms. Right, you could do I, your own yeah, thing. I could do my own thing. So and is that predominantly the, the the financial breakdown is just through streams and through going directly to the customer? Right now, that's exactly how any... Like I, said, I personally would recommend any content creator go about it. Because, um, of course, you can make a bag from these companies, but at the same time, like, they're paying you a check and they're making residual money off this money for, like, years to come. I could still go watch scenes, but, like... Um, Ava, Ava Devon, Kelly Devon, fucking Ice Lafon. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's yeah. still on the internet. So, if it's on the internet, and they're still you... making money, the, the companies are still making money off that. Exactly. Just off the streams, off the so they make it off the views. That's what I'm saying. Off the streams, like that's off the views. And there's like so like these websites like Pornhub and X Videos. Like you could post some shit up there, and like if you get enough views on it, they're gonna send you some money. That's just how right. everything is working now. Even on like TikTok, bro. Like TikTok is like that for like the clean stuff. If you get enough views, uh -huh. they're gonna save you some money. Work. Yeah, because I do we do we do stand-up comedy and it's kind of the same thing where you know there used to be a thing where you did Comedy Central and then you did Letterman and or you did Jimmy Fallon and then it, it was a course and now everything is what's your content, what's your Patreon, you know, the exactly. money. It's it's that as opposed to business to business to customer now yeah. it's business to customer direct line and, and i was just wondering how that how that works and so the platforms are up and then you 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 can you what do you pay to put your stuff on the platform like on x video or something and then it and then the streams happen or they just you put it up for free yeah pretty much you i mean put, you, you like you start an account you sign up or whatever um me having like actual mainstream like 
videos out with like Brazzers and like Naughty America. That helps yeah, too. Yeah. It just shows that I'm an actual porn star. So when I make the um, when I create the actual X videos, so it legitimizes it legitimizes you as a star, as a porn star. Exactly. You know. And then at that point, when people go to find maybe maybe I did this. So I did do a scene with um Sarah J for Naughty America. So they probably watched that scene and was like, "What the fuck is this?" Mm. And clicked on the link, and then my name came up and everything I did. For so whatever company comes up, along with all that I post on there, so it's kind of, but that view is is, is kind of like clickbait in a sense, you know, like kind of like when yeah, yeah, yeah. when CDs and mixtapes went from that to LimeWire, you know what I mean? Like yeah, 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 yeah. same thing. Yeah, so let me let me ask you this. The uh, so what I'm what I'm thinking about is is uh, in in the, so there's this this kind of indie it's a whole independent kind of thing where you have control over your own career and so on and so forth um but like i'm 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 pretty cool with uh with mo mo the monster and okay, um i haven't met him yet, but I king noir some of the old you know the older dudes yeah. who've been around for a while and what's what's interesting is those you know those guys were at that last era of where you know, it was contract, you know, you get paid for the scene. And then and, and so now everybody is kind of doing their own thing. I mean, I, I, I don't know if you know, you know, uh, Hot Rod. I know Hot Rod. I know Hot Rod. Yeah, he does. Uh, so Hot Rod used to, Hot, Yard, Hot Rod used to strip with me. He was a he was a male stripper with me back yeah. in my. So he's got to be 50 something now. But I mean, he yeah. was a, he was a bodybuilder who got caught up like like he, he was a fireman. Right, oh, he was the NY a, a NFD fireman who was bodybuilding. He was a professional bodybuilder who <laughs> he actually, yeah, yeah. um, I think he came in like 13th in Mr. Olympia. Like he was in, in, like in all the way in. And then, but he got caught up on, on a, on a, like a little, he got a little skid bid with selling steroids. He got caught up because he was in NYPD and a lot of them dudes was doing steroids and he yeah. was. You know, he he was getting his own product, and he was just hooking them up, and he got and feds got him caught up. But it's just it's um, uh, uh, let me ask you this because it, 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 right now when you're talking about these, everybody's doing this OnlyFans. Is it is it it's, so they didn't they shut down a lot of the OnlyFans, the the porn stuff, or didn't they try to clean it up or something happened? Yeah, they did put some restrictions on it. Um. So at one point you could do whatever you want on that shit. You could sell yeah, yeah. whatever you want on that shit, you know. Uh, but now it's just like I think one of the first ones was like um, no public, no public stuff, you know. Like and if you did something in public, I think like they was asking people to like send the location address of like the location. I mean, if you were shooting that. in the public, if you were shooting yeah, in the public, so, like I, so like yeah, people shoot like actual shit in the public all the time. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, like gorilla, crazy. like gorilla shoots, like yeah. yeah, like just like in the car, pull up under the bridge, like outside with the shorty, she's sucking like, yeah, your dick outside. You know what I mean? Like, and that kind of shit sells. But they kind of like did it that they did it. Um, uh, shit, they got to do with piss. You can't use piss on there or any of that shit no more. Literally, you can't do that. Right. Um, the another restriction is like uh, using those words for like. Um, like words like the Cash App and Venmo and PayPal, you can't use those. Okay, because they want you to do everything from there, you know. So like right. they have oh, a so lot of like, yeah. So they have a lot of like fucking restrictions. But if you if you using Cash App, then they don't make no cut off that. You feel what I'm saying? Like they want your fans to uh -huh. like send the money through there, so they get they little through cut. Them, they through they have a, they have through their platform directly. Yeah. Pretty much, yeah, pretty that's, much, yeah. Which is, I guess, that part is understandable, but for God's sake, so, uh, this is America. We should be allowed to piss on people. That's my whole stance. Yo. I mean, come on now. <laughs> what are we becoming? This is George Orwell, 1984. We should have learned. Um, so, well, maybe, well, what's wait, the... Go ahead. What's the, the mindset that you go into with something like this, man? Because it's not the average profession. It's beyond the average profession, right, that, that the average person does you know going from the stripping thing is it a gradual thing or does it blow your mind when you end up you know you're 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 fucking on film how does it affect your psyche and and, and who you are it definitely um it affects you in, in a lot of ways a lot of ways that's like like you know that you would like kind of like already assume it in ways that people don't even think of um like one of the like ones that's kind of pretty common is just like um 
it definitely affects your like your comfortability with yourself, I guess, you know, like, um, like I just left set and I just did a gangbang. So it's like, you know, you got five dudes in a room with their dicks out having mm-hmm. conversations. You know what I mean? Yeah. That gotta be some crazy line of comfortability with yourself. Yeah, well, it's also yeah. that's something you probably wouldn't have done when you was flipping on 42nd Street. Of course Street, not. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, hell no. That's not what I'm doing. Hell no. But now it's just like, you know, and then to be able to still focus, I don't even know this dude. We ain't boys. Maybe my, maybe my boy but like we ain't boys. Yeah. I don't know what to do. We just like you're just coworkers. I, I see him on Twitter. You know you're saying? coworkers, but, yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. You know, and so, you're just having but, coffee uh, like in between. You know, on your break with your dicks out, and you have to like. But that's that's the business you're in. Is you're just talking shop, but your dicks are out. You know, it, a lot it, of a lot of coffee cups with the lube. A lot of people they break a lot of coffee cups. The you know coffee cups slip out of, the, of your uh, hand. One of the producers told me on set one time, he was like, you know who's built for this and you know who's not. And he was, and and, and I guess like he was talking to the lighting guy or like something like that or whatever. And, and he was just like, well, what do you mean? And he was just like, when you can literally like sit down in a room and like jerk off and like talk to a guy and make conversation and when he co action, still have a hard dick and perform, you know you yeah. are in the right business. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I, I, I heard him talking about it and I'm like, yo, that's actually fucking wild. It's been plenty of times sitting there with lube in my hand, like, yo, so yeah, man, about I'm to <laughs> drive back to Vegas tonight and like oh I back like, yeah, let's get an action, boom, and just jump into it. You know what I yeah, mean? Right. Like so it's like it's not for everybody, you know what I mean? But it also like makes you a lot more comfortable with yourself. Um, but then it also affects your mental, man. It definitely affects your mental in like bad ways too. You know what I mean? Like you like you're transferring energy with people, you know what I mean? Like there's no columns to play. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? So yeah, yeah, yeah. Like a chick could be going through some shit. She could be super depressed, and you just like went and fucked five different depressed girls going through five different reasons for being depressed. <laughs> like, you feel what I'm saying, bro? And then, like, here you are on fucking Saturday trying to figure out why you feel depressed. Why like, you bro, fucked up? <laughs> yo, you feel what I'm saying? That shit happens to me. Like, And if you're an often, empath you know what or whatever, mean, bro? Often. <laughs> if you're an empath type of person and you take all that energy in, that is a, yeah, that's man. double the weirdness of that. You know, you're yeah, like, yeah, now I gotta fuck you while you, while I know your backstory You got a, you got a girl, May? Huh? You got a girl? You I got, got a girl. girl? Yeah. And how does she deal with this in in a She's um she's uh she does with it pretty great. She's cool. Is she in the business or no? Yeah, she's dope. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, she's cool. But like I had to really like I was gonna say, like, you know, she deal with it because she's in the business, but like not every chick in the business can deal with it. Let's just say that right yeah. now. Cause I've been I've been Oh, even if they're in the business, they have oh, a problem with yeah. you being I not I wouldn't oh, say really? all I wouldn't say all the majority, but I've know from experience. Like sometimes, like, you know, just, just because you're a porn star don't mean you can date other porn stars. You know? And that's so okay. give me talk about that. Talk about that a little that you you're you're dating a porn star, like a yeah. situation where you're dating a porn star and she's bugging about who you fucking basically. Like, can you talk about that a little bit? The irony, um, it's, it's it's a bit like um and then in the same industry where she's making the most money right it's a bit um <laughs> it's a bit like it's a bit of uh, nerve wracking because not only are you jealous but but like at the same time it's like you don't see the benefits that you have and the ones that I lack you feel what I'm saying so and that's I got into this willingly so that's cool mm-hmm. but at the same time it's like don't question me or ask me to slow down when you're when 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 you can like you know maneuver how you want to maneuver so i have to shoot like maybe like every month you feel what i'm saying just to keep my bills going and all that keep 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 mm-hmm. the dream going and all that you know what i mean um certain women don't they could like you know do two scenes a month and be cool you feel what i'm saying mm-hmm. and that's great phenomenal god bless this but at the same time like you should never like try to get a man to fall back from his work knowing so that how, like how would they on that level so i i know from experience just doing comedy right there's always a situation where a girl goes she gets just jealous of the time you know like hey you're out too much why can't we go out saturday nights why does it this that how would she try to hold you back career-wise or whatever what would the what would the argument be about that would slow it you would down be just just blatantly trying to get me to slow down at work 
maybe because like we both follow each other on Twitter and that's where I post all of my work at. So when she hops on Twitter, she sees me fucking on a different girl and a different girl and a different girl and a different girl. And but even though that's work, work and she knows it's work that she does, she still I mean, they have gets jealous. I'm not going to say and act like I'm, I'm, I'm not going to say I've never felt a little tingle on the inside. You feel what I'm saying? Like over certain things when I first got in dealing with certain chicks when I was dating them. So I get it. But at the same time, I, coming from where I come from, I never ask nobody to like slow their money down, you know. For sure. Mm. There's an did irony you, to did that. Did you come up hard? I mean, I mean, I know you was on the street hustling 42nd Street, but did you come up real hard or or did you go up? Nah. You, was your was your pops around or no? Well, I guess you could say well, I didn't take it hard, I should say. You know what I mean? I was I mean I you was, do, do what you do. I get it, yeah. you do what you do, but I mean yeah. in retrospect, so like for instance, I, I always say this, like I grew up in Brooklyn in the 80s, right? And yeah. I don't know how I survive. Like I'm, I wonder why I'm still living. You, you feel what I I'm saying? You. Like when I so think you. perspectively, what was going on, and and, and you know I, how so I, you know, how many guns in my face, how many gun, you yeah. know, like all yeah. kinds of stuff. I, I mean, I remember getting, I mean, remember getting shot at on Park Avenue up in the Bronx over by the, by the, by the you know, just crazy situations and i don't i but i mean you're in it so you don't really you don't really that's what feel i'm saying it. yeah 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 that is you know that with that one when you're in it you don't really un understand it um break dancing came about like maybe like i was like i was flipping this shit with the with the older dudes you know like doing that maybe like you know 11 12 but around like 13 and 14 i was going to skate key so if you was on the skate key, you already know what's up. You know what I mean? So yeah. I wasn't all yeah, yeah, yeah. like like it wasn't all break dance and it wasn't Ex all back explain to Harry dance. what skate key. <laughs> yeah. I got you. So what so what I'm saying is if you from the west if from the east coast, you in Bronx, whatever the case, you know what's up. Um skate key is um skate key was a skating ring. The objective was to go there and skate. He wouldn't go there to skate. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like pretty much it was like it was where all the teen parties happened. You had to be about like maybe 15, 16 to get in. I was in them just I was in them parties around like 13, chilling with like um a bunch of blood motherfuckers, um, running around with uh Ladybug and all the other motherfuckers or whatever the case. So it like it was always a different shootout. Skate Key was getting shut down every other weekend. Um, like it it became a thing where it was like closed for like a whole summer at one point. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like somebody was always getting locked up, always getting shot at the cops. And like the funny shit is. The police station is right around the corner. <laughs> yeah. It's literally right there yeah. on 138. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, but what I'm saying is it wasn't always like backflips and like windmills on me. You know, I I did that. Um, but like my uncle, that's who like was in my life. I was I, I didn't like my pops wasn't there. I was born in Bethlehem Hills Correctional Facility. I had my grandmother. Mm. You know what I'm saying my mom's was on crack until I was from from when I was like a baby until maybe like Four years ago, you know what I'm saying? She's been cleaning about four years straight. So I think she good right. now. Like, she actually getting fat. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, it's like, <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. Yeah, so she she actually clean now. So, but like I'm saying, I, I didn't really take it hard. So like whenever she got crazy at home and mom Duke's in the crib bugging, pulling her hair out or whatever, I just go downtown and I go dance with the dudes that I was probably running around in the hood with. You feel what I'm saying? Like, but they would also go dance. And this is around that time where, like, you know, people were, like, coming downtown to go to the movies on 42nd Street. You know, it was, it was always yeah. a problem down there. All of the people yeah. who had the Bronx, meeting the Bronx, meeting Harlem and Brooklyn and Queens. And if you was on if you was on Times Square past 1, 1 a.m., you had to be with somebody. You know what I mean? Like, so I, so, I came yeah. up like that. Um, that's, that's a somewhat really of it. Intense upbringing for sure, man. And then you 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 find yourself in these these abstract worlds that are you know not the nine to five world, the adult films, the whole thing. Even dealing with the jealousy, like that's kind of it sounds like a mind fuck the whole thing. But especially the thing where you have to sit down and have a conversation with a girl who's going, "Hey, I don't like how you were fucking that that girl." You mean at work, like you know? <laughs> yeah, man. you mean the, the you mean the porn star. You didn't like how I was fucking the boy. Who's that stuff? girl? You know, yeah, you look like you who's was that girl enjoying you were that too much. Yeah, it's I don't crazy, like how you, man. how you how you smiled when you orgasm during that that you know whatever. And 
so now do you find yourself being dealing with the depression? I mean, we've had a couple adult film stars here, and they deal with, you know, it, it could be a real mind fuck. It's really hard. Do you find yourself dealing with that level of depression? Oh, I definitely, I've definitely been behind that, man. Like, just like, um, kind of like what, like, the, um, Dante asked, like, did you come up hard? I didn't take it hard. It was always like, you know, tough. Yeah, but you came up hard, hard dog. It, it's, I mean, what'll happen? What what happens is, you you're in it, so it, it is what it is. You deal with it yeah. as it is, but then there becomes a perspective of it when you when you when you start when you get your paper up. When you and not saying that your paper's not up, but when you when you're not on the hustle, when you're not on the grind, yeah. and then you 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 sit back and you take a rest and you go, wait a minute, yo, that, you know, it's it's weird because even on this podcast, I'll be telling a story that just happened, and 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 then you know, even like Harry and I've been friends for twenty years, and he'll be like, you know, it, it's just like. Oh, a word like that, like, yeah. like, oh, that's how you know that's what you was doing. Yeah, I mean, but it yeah. was so it's it don't seem hard. Like even when you say, "Yo, my mom's was cracked out," and I just would go there. You know what I'm saying? And it, it, it's so you're so accustomed to this that you don't even see, I guess, the tragedy in it. You know what I mean? Because well, no, so listen, busy. now, now, now for sure, like thirty years old, I definitely like that's what I was uh, about to get into. Um, like. Coming up, it was just like hard, hard exterior. It is, yeah. it is what it is. You like, nigga, you want to be a man? Like, like my uncle, he he came up with Alpo before he was Alpo, running around fucking um, yeah, yeah. polo grounds. That's where all of my family is from. from town, the yeah, polo yeah. Grounds, you know what I'm saying. So it's like he was like he wasn't with that complaint shit, and it's like I yeah. I, re I respected that, you know what I mean. So um, it was all cold back then, but then like when I get here, and it's like I'm trying to deal with that shit the same way. But shit is really affecting me now. It's not just like some regular street shit or whatever the case is. Like I'm really trying to like get my company from here to here, and I'm dealing with like um, the biasness of being a black porn star. You feel what I'm saying? Like so, and I have no control over it. I got to play the game. Wait, when you say the bias, what do you mean? What do you mean? I mean every energy that like a little bias in it, man. You know how it is, bro. I'm like I'm not this stereotypical black porn star. I'm not six feet. I'm five nine. You feel what I'm saying? I ain't swinging 12, I'm swinging 9. You feel what I'm saying? So it's like one of those kind of like stereotypical things. Well, like, there's, you know, a, ster so, there's a typecasting There's a typecasting in yeah, adult yeah, film. So you can't yeah. you can't just play like the professor or the fucking, you know, or the whatever, the owner yeah. of the restaurant. You got to be like the guy who's hired to fuck my wife. You know, that, it's just very limiting. It's you got to be yeah, the, big, the, big, the big black buck almost. Like it's, it, I don't know if that's a proper term. Well, he's but. not even saying that. He's saying even the limit in his height and stuff and his dudes. Yeah, but that's what I'm you saying. Know, there's, a, dudes. there's this style of porn where it's interracial porn where it's the biggest, uh, largest black dude you could find, you know, banging a well, tiny white saying. girl. Like, yeah, yeah and they play off the stereotypical of, yeah. of it. Even when it, it even when it comes to the other races sometimes, you know what I mean? Like they want that like that white boy with the blue eyes, that all American. Well, here's the thing, is I mean? it is yeah. it the fact the fact that there's so much independent stuff, is that opening it up more so that you, you so that you have more opportunities with because I know for a fact it was like if you're a white girl and you you fucking black dudes. That used to be a black ball. Like you was black ball from that. It wasn't a, it's like when you you have a couple of kind of MILF chicks, like you said, I'm Anna De, uh, Ava Devine and, and like mm -hmm. uh Anna, what's the chick's name that, that cunt that we hate? What's <laughs> Which um, one? Lisa Ann. Lisa Ann. Okay, that I know that fucking, is, yeah. yeah, they're awful. Like they they started fucking with black dudes and a lot of them started fucking with black dudes because they they were aging out and they started doing this interracial a lot of interracial gangbang stuff and okay. they start doing it with black dudes where there was a that stigma was attached back the, in the day is what you're saying like it yeah. was yeah once it, was, you, it was yeah it was. but so that that effect that's gonna obviously man that's a lot that's gonna affect your mental health and stuff so yeah, pretty much. Yeah, it definitely will. That kind of shit definitely um affects your mental health, affects your uh, affects your confidence in a sense. You know, when you're putting your all into it, and um, just to get back to what I was saying, yeah, it was it, it was it was just like you know I was 
I was keeping it hard, but, but then when I get here and I see what it is, you know, dealing with that, I, like, it's kind of hard to just be like, yo, you're a man. This is what it is. Just deal with it. You're black. Like, you ain't the only one going through it. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's a little hard. Like, it felt like, you know. Well, that goes back to like, your uncle or whatever. You don't talk about shit. You just, you that's just what do I'm it. Saying, you know right. what I mean? Yeah, just dealing with it. So now. Not I just, always the healthiest you know, thing to do. Exactly. It was, it was, don't, don't get me wrong. It was cool because they got me through the Bronx, and I'm grateful for that. Honestly speaking, I'm grateful for that. I'm, I'm, shit, I'm surprised. I kind of made it out too, because I figured like, damn, I'm about to be here on Section Eight, like everybody yeah. else. You know what I mean? Like whatever the case, like, but that's not the case now. You know what I mean? Like, so, um, but now that I'm here at thirty, like transitioning into how it should be is hard as fuck. Like going to thirty. Yeah. Like, doing that shit on my own. Having to go say, hey, I, I need to, like, start talking to somebody because, like, I've been doing this shit alone for 15 years. <laughs> you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Like, literally. What so was the, like, what know, was the here, uh, from a lack of a better term, breaking point where you went, you know what, I really, I need to get professional help. Because I find, I mean, Hispanic, from my culture, Latinos and, and, and black people, they are the last to go to therapy. So what made you... Harry, you're not a white dude? I'm not white. Time, Contrary to popular belief, <laughs> uh, half Latino, half <laughs> Armenian, let's get that out of the way. Uh, just to remind people, I am not a white. I just yeah. found out. Yeah. That's crazy. <laughs> well, you're surprised. And you've seen it all, uh, Maze. Um, even you're surprised. But, I mean, I, that culture, it's it's not it's frowned upon in that culture a little bit, at least generationally. Yes, yes. So how did, how did yes. you make that decision and how what was the reaction you got with that? Or how did you feel about it? So I've, I've, I've always been told I should probably, like, you know, go talk to somebody just, just because of how we came up, you know. Um, I used to, like, as a teenager and shit, you know, blame my family for certain things and certain ways that we didn't have. So I used to always, like, you know, at school or whatever, like, you know, they like, anybody talk to your counselor and shit like that. I always, like, you know, downplayed it. So that was always in my mind when I actually did do it. That was like, you know, you've been told this for 15 years. It's about time. Um, you've been strong for, like, 15 years. It's about time. <laughs> you feel what I'm saying? But the actual regular point was me, like, giving my, um, I want to say, I, like, I, I, I gave my, um, my heart to a broken woman. And like expected something different from the outcome. You feel what I'm saying? In the and, in, um, in the business, somebody in the business, or just nah, she not square. in the business. She, nah, she's not in the business. She's just around the business. You feel what I'm saying? Um, mm -hmm. but um, yeah, facts. Gave my heart to, to, to that person, and it kind of ended like what it should have ended like because she's a woman who has mm -hmm. been mentally broken. She was targeted. You know what I'm saying to be mentally broken to. Be, to be pimped you know what I'm saying so but like I'm thinking um I'm thinking like it's 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 like you know it's um it's a past thing maybe we not there no more like you know this facade or this layer that I was getting from this person um kind of gave up a certain aura. Wait, so you were you was you was with the square chick and then somebody targeted her and pimped her out no 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 what I'm saying is she was already she was already that was already like that you know what I'm saying? Like, well, oh, it happened first. But, it, like, you know, that so so me being who I am, I sell dick, right? So how can I judge a bitch for selling pussy? Right. Cool. So, but, like, I'm not, this is what I want to do. Nobody came at me and, like, broke me down to do it. Right, right. right you feel right. what I'm saying? So, and. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And after speaking with, like, certain, like, you know, individuals and shit like that, like, it kind of came to, like, notion that, like, yo, you probably should like, you know, because why you, I really felt like I needed like support at this point in my life. You feel what I'm saying? Like literally, I'm like, what, yeah, yeah. Like, and it's like, why the fuck do you need somebody so bad when you didn't got all the way here? Nigga, by your, you done left your family on the East Coast. Nigga, you on the West Coast and did it two years strong on your own. So like how you, you became from chef, break dancer, chef. Stripper, all that shit on your own. Why do you need somebody? And I like it was like dire to the point where I'm like, yo, I'm feeling suicidal and all kind of shit. You feel what I'm saying? Like, not over shorty, just like just the industry itself. That's what happened. From saying like I kind of was going through some well, suicidal just shit. all of it at once. Sometimes it's the straw that breaks the camel's back. You know, it's just like on top of the you business. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, on top of your yeah, past, you're like. Here's Here's a I'm gonna give you a little little old old black dude. Talk gem. to me, OG. Like, Talk to me. Yeah. <laughs> you cannot like you cannot control what people do. 
you, you can only control what you do, That's right? And so a lot of times, especially when you when you when you've been so hard, right? When you've been so hard that you're you're so accustomed to whatever it is, I'll figure it out, right? Um, no matter how bad it is, I'll find a way. Uh, and and we get this now. Here's a a, a thing that I, maybe you're not even considering is like if you read stuff on just our history, black history, you know, slavery, Jim Crow, um, you know, black codes. When you like when Kansas you start to see, all that shit. I, all, I mean, but I'm I'm talking about the the what this country has done. To black folks, when you start delving into that, I'm gonna I'm gonna get you a number and I'm gonna send you a a a, a couple of titles of shit I, I want you to check out because sure. what happens is it's not just the trauma that you put yourself through trying to get here. Like your 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 mama was under trauma, mm-hmm. your mama's mama was under trauma, mm-hmm. your mm-hmm. uncle was under trauma, your mm-hmm. uncle your uncle your father's father was under trauma, and so. What happens is, so there's this this thing of like, well, you know, slavery was a long time ago, but what you don't understand is nobody's ever healed. Like, you haven't even healed from the shit, the trauma that you've gone through. But let's be honest, you've been raised by people. By unhealed women, yeah. But by, by, un, by people that have been under trauma. And mm-hmm. they have been raised by people who were under trauma all the way back to the point where you're lynching people, you know. You talking about the 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 um. You're going back to the um, to to you know to the 1800s where black folks is getting lynched, raped, and all of this stuff. And this is you know what I'm saying. If you go back in your limit lineage, which I don't even know if you could do that, but you you it's it's compounded trauma after trauma after trauma, and never is there a rest. There's no breather. Yeah. So you 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 don't even understand the the magnitude of the trauma, you feel me? And and so then you're so focused on just your little piece of it. You know what I'm saying? Yo, whatever whatever I, I broke dance, I was on 46. I I made it through. I'm out here, I'm doing this. Da, da, da. But it's it's all of that. Not so and, and I don't know if you noticed, but that trauma is pat you you were talking about passing of energy. Yeah. It's passed through. It's passed through the DNA, dog. Yeah, like this is the. Tr- and so you gotta first Not understand. Only that, but even once you make it out, you probably part of what you're dealing with is survivor's guilt a little bit because so it makes it difficult for you to bitch about anything. I don't even think you that. But what, what what I'm saying, you have to understand that you don't have control. Like somebody who's always had to be in control, you don't have control over somebody else's trauma so you get in this situation where you finally open up to somebody and Mm -hmm. you 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 this feels like what you should be doing because you should be able to have these interactions and somebody is so broken that they can't even accept the love that you're trying to give them and you can't do nothing about it like there's there's no solution to this i mean i understand that you understand that how broken she was but even if she was broken, what, there's still a situation, especially as a black man, your 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 instinct is like, why can't I get past? I, like, I get through everything else. Why can't I fix this? And so you got to you gotta forgive yourself for being oh, yeah, human. For sure. For sure. For and- sure. I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm definitely there. Like, listen, this was like, um, this was months ago. This had to be about like, Five months ago, maybe going on six, six, six months ago. If I'm saying, but like, I'm definitely in my little sessions. Like, if I'm saying, I'm talking to my people. Yeah, yeah. My self help done for me personally. Tap but, it back. But you hear, but, but, but Maze, you got to understand something. Five months ain't no time. Like, oh no, nah, I start. mean, it's a start. For yeah, I'm, and I'm not, I'm, I'm not I'm knocking still that forward. Word. Right. right. Yeah, but you gotta understand. You you still gotta understand. Like, even when I look at me. And I look, you know, I look at, you know, there's a stab wound here, there's a this, there's a, you know what I'm saying? Even on, physically, there's, there's scars. But, so imagine the emotional scars, like if you could peel that back, 
that Off you're so busy. Mo- yeah. You you feel what I'm saying? So you gotta understand that you 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 gotta you gotta continuously forgive yourself for a situation that you really didn't have control of in the first place. And you gotta also understand, like, you know, fuck Shazam and 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 and, and Captain America, and, like black men in this country are the real Avengers, B. They're the real X-Men because with all of this, you still standing, you know what I'm saying? You still pushing forward with all the trauma, crackhead like moms, pops not being, you, you feel what I'm saying? Just, and, and so I, I think it's, it's, we, we, we tend to, especially a black, we tend to push past this and just move on. And then we're affected by something. And then it's like, Yo, yo, it, it, we, we're always pushing it down because we don't know how to how to not. You feel me? Yo, yeah, let's yeah. let's shut this down. We only get let's get on the Patreon side. It's you know the behind the paywall. Let's we'll really dig in. Yeah, all right? if you want to join uh, us over for, for, for the show, go for it, Maze. Sorry, but Maze, what do you want to plug? You want to plug your social media, whatever you want to plug? Oh, oh, definitely. Yeah, um, they can follow me at um. All of my socials is, is really the same, man. Maze the goat, M A Z two E's. Uh, that's for TikTok, so um, Instagram and uh, Twitter, and then the only fans is gonna be Maze fans triple You know how that go, man. Word. Okay. All right. Harry, talk. Uh, if you want to join us for the bonus show uh, that we're gonna do right now with Maze, uh, just give, you sign up for patreoncom slash manschool 202 That's where we do all the bonus content, listener mail. Uh, you can listen to all the uh, old episodes of the Beige Phillips show, the the OG, the first couple hundred episodes. We're starting to load those up. Those will be available nice and easy on patreon.com slash manschool202. Uh, and um, uh, if you want to follow my stuff, all my social media, at Harry Terjanian, and uh, follow me YouTube, TikTok, the whole deal. Oh, also consultations. If you want a consultation, email me at advicefromharry at gmail.com. Dante? Yeah, uh, you want me, you know, DanteNero.com, click on consult. You can talk to me on um, all my Insta- Instagram, the Dante Nero, all the rest is DanteNero.com. The website is almost up. Going to have the merch up. GYBB, get your balls back. WWDD, what would Dante do? The sexual revolutions being podcasted. Yo, I love y'all, man. Out. Check us on the Patreon side, www.patreon slash manschool202.com. All right, yo, we out.